Well, welcome back. We are here with Vernon Morris. He is Arizona State University Director of the School of Mathematical and Natural Sciences. And yeah, we're here today because uh, we want to talk about getting uh, more access to uh, atmospheric sciences and just uh, you know all the STEM disciplines in particular, more graduate education, more exposure. Tell us a little bit about your work in that. Well, I've been around a while, so the work started some time ago, I think at Howard University, more formally in geosciences, with the development of the atmospheric sciences graduate program there. It started at a time when I think there were fewer than 10 black PhDs in atmospheric sciences, and we built a program that over its first 10 year uh, period of producing PhDs, produced 60% of all the black PhDs in the United States and 30% of Latina PhDs in the United States. So we're proud of that because not just producing them, but they've gone on to really illustrious careers at NOAA, at NASA, uh, in the federal government. One of our alumni is in the White House uh, as a White House advisor right now. They've started their own companies. Um, so we're very proud not only of increasing representation, but increasing successful leadership in the atmospheric sciences. And a lot of that has to do with mentorship. It does. It, it has to do with mentorship. It has to do with what we call critical mentoring. You, you bring people into the field with the express purpose of preparing them to be resilient, preparing them to be leaders, arming them really with the knowledge that it is uh, going to be a differential burden once they get into leadership, that they're not traveling as privileged a path as a lot of their colleagues that they'll be competing with for jobs. Because that can be just, just such an, an extra burden on already challenging discipline. Absolutely. It is challenging. Um, you do have to have an expertise. You do have to be able to market your expertise. And then you've got to be able to demonstrate that expertise once you're given the opportunity. But at the same time that you're focused on that, as, as, as everybody in the field is, you have part of your bandwidth dedicated to um, you know, dealing with prejudice. And that means quite often that you can't give 100% of yourself to your craft. It's one of the things that makes me really proud about the students that we've put out, is that even at that diminished bandwidth, they're still as productive as most people, if not more productive. And what if we didn't have to deal with that? What if the entire field didn't have to deal with sexism or ableism or racism uh, or any of the other isms that we have to deal with? And we are we're speaking to the AGU audience, which is full of stakeholders that can help make those changes. What would you say to them? There are challenges that people need to overcome in terms of internal biases and attachments to historical practices that are racialized, that are gendered, that are um, highly discriminating to individuals who are not privileged white males at the expense of general education to all. I think in addition to having individuals recognize um, sort of the individualized challenges, we've got to change institutional structures actually. We have to change reward structures. We have to change how the National Academy of Sciences holds people accountable. And that's been such a theme that we've seen here throughout the conference and it really falls in line with that theme of science as society. So yeah. I, I think that's yeah. a great note to end on. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, hopefully there's a lot to take away from that. Thank you.